Hello, everyone, and welcome. This is our last session of the day, so thanks for hanging around. Our next session is called Securing Authentication uh, with and within FIDO. Our presenter is Manish uh, Kadawat, uh, who's the cybersecurity lead from Target. Manish, welcome. Hey, thank you, folks. Uh, thank you for being here. I know it's been a pretty long day, and I'm probably the last thing between you and your drinks. So I will try to keep it short. Um, and I hope when you go back uh, to your office next week, you have something to uh, discuss from this session. Right? So let's get started. I'm Manish. I lead engineering efforts for enterprise authentication at Target. We have 2,000 plus apps used by partners, team members at HQ, and stores. Target was uh, one of early adopters of FIDO. Today, every other team member uses passwordless uh, to log in into various applications. How we did it, that's a story to hear from Tom Sheffield tomorrow morning. But in this session, we are going to talk about a few security considerations when deploying FIDO in general. So agenda, it's straightforward. We are going to do a quick recap on the strongest authenticator. Then we will define some generic architecture and talk about various attack surfaces. The strongest authenticator. I, I hope I don't need to tell which one is it, right? Um, but I do have one question. How many of you have FIDO deployed in your organizations? That will define my pace. Okay, sure. Thank you. I, I see a lot of hands, right? So probably we'll do this quite, uh, this slide even faster. So FIDO is phishing resistant. Due to the domain bound nature, right? If enrollment on authenticate.com cannot be fished at authenticatex.com. Then there is no remote attack since FIDO requires a physical interaction with the authenticator. Somebody sitting in another country cannot really control it. No secrets on server. All we have is private key. So even if you get a hands on it, you can't really do anything. No replay. So one time challenge in protocol ensures that even if somebody is able to intercept the authentication payload, they cannot use it at later point of time. And last but not the least, strong cryptography. Sounds very ideal, right? But we all know no ecosystem is 100% secure. So natural question arises, how can a FIDO implementation be compromised? Before we try to answer that question, let's define a generic architecture for FIDO implementation so that that will be our base for uh, further discussions. So we have a web UI application which talks to SSO for session or to let user log in. SSO talks to FIDO server for validating FIDO credentials. And we have a storage where we store public keys. So I, I am dividing them in three parts. We have one database, FIDO server, and REST. Let's uh, dive into FIDO server. But, but before that, let me plant a thought. If a FIDO key is known to be compromised, how long it will take in your authentication ecosystem to isolate and exclude from lock-in mechanism? Think about it. Then we have attack vectors from FIDO server. First one is obviously the compromised security key. So tomorrow, if you got to know that, hey, hackers have found a way to compromise a particular key, or there is a weaker algorithm available, can we block that particular key? Well, we can. If you implement metadata service from FIDO Alliance, metadata service has a lot of information about an authenticator via AA GUID. Now, AA GUID is unique for each authenticator model or type. You can build an allow list or disallow list based on various application risk and use cases. Also, whenever available, use attestations, which uh, provides little bit trust on the authenticator and also the list we are building. Next is authentication subdomains. 
there are some scenarios where an organization needs to support multiple subdomains for authentication. Let's say a.example.com or b.example.com. In order to do that, we can define our relying party configuration as just example.com. That would mean that you can do enrollment on any subdomain and that enrollment can be used for authentication on any other subdomain. Works fine, but what if there is a stale or not used subdomain which is compromised and hacker social engineer and user to do an authentication ceremony there? Let's do a visual. So we have a Bob here. Bob owns the evil.example.com. I mean, they have compromised. And then Bob shares a link to Emma and lures her into clicking it. When Emma clicks the URL, she sees an authentication page. Emma being a fan of Fido does not care about phishing and just do the authentication ceremony. Now, once the evil.example.com gets the authentication payload, it forwards it to Bob. And then Bob will forward it to the correct uh, authentication subdomain, auth.example.com. Will it pass? Well, it can. How can we make sure it doesn't? Validate subdomains during authentication. Don't do any kind of wildcard checks. Next we have is key cloning. What happens if somebody is able to clone my device? Right. We have Bob here. Again, he has cloned my device, right? And try to do an authentication ceremony. Will it pass? Well, it can. Can we, pre uh, can we prevent it? Depends if your authenticator supports a feature called sign count and how seriously Fido server takes it. Sign count is a number which in keeps increasing with an with each authentication attempt, right? Many authenticators implement it. And how do we detect is there are two authenticators trying to do independent, trying to incre increment independently a number. Then there will be a case on N plus one authentication when there is a mismatch. And that mismatch will be a sign of potential compromise. Next food for thought. If your database is compromised, how long will it take in your authentication ecosystem to detect and isolate? The database. We keep saying that there are no secrets on server, but that does not mean that we can afford any less security there. The reason being user key mapping. If somebody is able to change it, they can log in as anybody And it is even more concerning if your DB infra is from third party. The manipulation can happen at source with the direct DB access or even when in transit uh, by intercepting the incoming traffic. Uh, this is how data manipulation or like strong key had called out in their one of newsletters, key substitution attack work. So I have Alex, a legitimate user and you have their key. Now, Rob gets access to the database and they replaces his key, sorry, his key with Alex. Also, Rob created a new entry for Nancy. Nancy never used passwordless in the past. But with the DB access, Rob can log in as Alex or Nancy whenever they want. How, what can we do about it? Always remember that even though there are no secrets, mapping is critical. So implement data integrity. Any entry which is created, updated, or retrieved should be signed and verified by Fido server. So even though somebody is able to edit the database, the signature verification will fail at Fido server and ultimately authentication will be denied. Also, you could consider 
monitoring the queries in the DB, like who is updating what. My final food for thought. So with no remote attack possible, can your authentication ecosystem detect anomalies which may go unnoticed by Fado server? We have network attacks and cloned and stolen keys. When we think about these, two solutions come in mind. One is firewall. FIDO or no FIDO, we all have them. Second is risk engine. Traditionally, we have relied upon location and device cookies to detect an anomaly in the transaction. But since FIDO requires you to be near the device, near the compromised device, it might be time that we extend those patterns to maybe behavior or even combine FIDO specs. For example, if a sign count is mismatching, then maybe step up or block the transaction. Second, the A good. So A good can tell a lot about the authenticator, like what kind of transports are available, um, what is the platform look like, the OS and browser maybe sometimes, right? And you can actually match it against the user agent and take an input in your risk engine, whether to step up or block. We could also add behavioral patterns, like unusual time or location of login, sudden password change. In hybrid world, often when a device is lost, we go and change some important password. So that can still be an input for risk engine. Putting into points, there is no perfect crime, but the right detection at right time is important. Educate your device security and support teams that if a, if a device is reported stolen, delete your FIDO credential as well as when you are wiping the device or resetting the password. Also, like we discussed, extend traditional risk engine. On that note, let me conclude. No ecosystem is 100% secure, but the right choice is to use whatever strongest available to you without hurting much user experience. And that's FIDO for us. So let's use FIDO, a step towards better security and convenience. Have defense in depth, validate your configurations, multi-layer security, Always remember, misconfiguration is the biggest enemy of security products. And educate users and device security teams on how to handle compromises from a FIDO angle. Well, that was me. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Do we have any questions? Hi, I'm Matthew Miller with Cisco. A question, um, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned metadata. It's not a topic that comes up very often or hasn't come up very often. Um, and traditionally, like I can see how you would apply metadata during authentication, uh, registration to block known um, bad authenticators. But what kind of flow would you recommend for identifying and weeding out after the fact authenticators that may have been previously registered before one got popped and you knew that you decided that that was no longer welcome on your authentication system. So what I do, what we do is we cache the metadata. So during the authentication, you could use your A good to see if it is in allowed list or not. Any other questions? All right. Well, thank you again, thank Manish. You. Appreciate your time and great presentation.